So in this video, we're going to talk about how to systematically punish those filthy guard players. Now, I myself am a guard player, but I've recently adapted into the wrestling aspect of jiu-jitsu and really started working on my passing. And standing across from me is Kriya Hart. He's a 17-year-old purple belt child project. He's been training for like 10 years. And um, I'm going to get the one up on him today, and I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to do that in a systematic way. Now, there were a lot of things that happened in this match, one of which um, I broke my face on his knee as I, as I dove in for this guillotine right here. You guys will see more of that in the vlog coming out uh, next Wednesday or Friday next week. Um, I more so want to talk about the techniques used in this video, so we're going to go ahead and skip through that part. So after the doctor patches me up, we're going to hit one of the most pristine passing sequences I've been able to hit in tournament. I'm first going to use this hand spin I saw from Owen Jones, kind of gets him on his back, gets me to an immediate angle. And there is so much to cover in this match, and I'm only going to go over a few sequences, otherwise this would literally be an hour long video. But to get started with this one, you're going to see me cutting that angle using my hip and knee post and getting into something I call the slash passing system. So this is kind of my theory and my viewpoint on guard passing. So I'm going to break down how I'm passing his guard right in this sequence. All right. So as we get going again, you know, I'm using the hand spin to get to the angle. As I cut this angle, one of the big things I go to the hip and knee post and notice how he raises his hips and he tries to throw this high leg into play. Now what's going on here is we're both pushing into each other. However, the difference is as we start making this force between us, he has to catch himself with this high leg somewhere on my body. So in order for this to be effective for him, he needs to attach his leg to my body. And if, if I don't allow him to do that and I really wall my chest, he has nothing to latch onto. So with a simple push, I can just knock the knee and leg out of the way and start to dive deeper onto the pass. So this is like the number one mistake I see people make when they're passing. And that is attaching the torso before the hips are cleared. Now, I understand you want to get to torso as fast as possible. You want to get chest to chest to solidify the guard pass. However, with good guard players, you really need to focus on clearing the hips and don't commit to torso too early. Otherwise, you'll overextend yourself. And there's so many things that they can attack from there. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus back on the hips. I know I haven't cleared the hips yet. In order to start clearing them, I'm going to walk to north south. However, now I make a mistake. Notice how I'm about centered with Kriya and our spines are aligned and my nuts are on his face. Um, in my opinion, it's pretty bad. If I go all the way to north south only because now he has options to go to either side of me whereas if I stay to one side of Korea it's gonna be a lot harder for him to rotate and it limits his options to escape now because of that he is able to rotate and regard now next it's not necessarily a mistake but it's an inherent risk with a calculated counter now as I start to walk back into north south Korea latches onto my leg now this can be dangerous because good leg lockers will win the maintenance battle here and they can start attacking the leg but the easy counter here is to simply just sprawl out on that leg and it's going to be very very hard for them to start making meaningful grips now it's definitely not pretty and i i'm sure i can make it more pretty but i'm just sprawling out on the leg diving my head into the balls and we're able to escape and we'll start working back into this next sequence now this is where things really start to pick up so I talked about this a lot, um, a concept called overcorrecting. So basically when we're passing, we're not necessarily trying to faint our opponent out, but we're trying to overcorrect their movement through feints, if, if that makes sense. So you're gonna see me start walking to the left side as Korea goes to regard. I'm simply just pulling his legs out and forcing a big reaction when he was only trying to create a small reaction. And that kind of gives me the openings that I need. So I go back, elbow in the thigh, hand on the ankle, and I'm gonna play this game called Heads or Tails. So Heather Tails is basically when they try to bring this outside leg here, this is called the high leg. When they try to bring this back to the inside position, we're going to play heads, which means my head goes down on my elbow and I put a lot of pressure down on the hips trying to staple them. As he tries to bring this bottom leg in, I'm going to puff up my chest, raise my posture and flare my hips into my opponent, creating a wall and barricading their legs from making those attachments and making those connections. And because of that, the legs fall over because there's nothing for them to attach to. And in order for him to effectively attack those high legs and those defensive reactions, he has to raise his hips and kind of use that momentum. But when that momentum stopped by the wall, they kind of fall over. And that's kind of the idea of slash passing. We're just going side to side, slashing into our opponent and forcing huge energy consuming reactions in order for them to defend. Now, I think it's a good time to let you guys know I do have a full mini passing instructional going over more of my slash passing details. So if you guys are interested, it's in the description below. For the same price as a trip to Starbucks, take 15 minutes out of your day and significantly improve your guard passing ability. So after that absolutely insane pass, uh, my mouth opened up again. So I had to go clean that up before returning back to the mat and hitting one of the other most beautiful sequences that I've that I've pulled off in tournament. 
So this one starts off in the same manner, using the hand spin, getting him to his back, and then walking into the hip and knee post. Now, what we talked about earlier where when we commit to north-south and they are able to escape from both sides, it happens right here. So, so Korea carries my momentum and is able to shoot out underneath me. And what I'm gonna do now, I back up for just a split second to kind of see what my next move is, and I end up grabbing the head and start pressuring on to the left side here. So another huge concept in the slash passing system is managing threat and managing their defensive resources. So you can see Kriya is pushing with both of his hands and this top leg is desperately trying to get in. What this tells me as a guard passer is that he's committing all of his resources here to this left side, which means his right side is fairly vulnerable. So what you're gonna see me do is I'm gonna use my left hand here to scoop under his knee and jump under his guard. And I'm gonna start pressuring in hard from the right side now. But because he committed all of his resources on the left, I had a very strong opening here on the right and I was able to get super deep on the duck under. I'm gonna cover the head with my hand and start working chest to chest, eventually getting three points for the pass. Now I have a few more battles that I wanna cover in this video, but if you guys wanna watch the raw footage, I have it over my second channel where you guys can see the full 12 minute round. So go check that out if you're interested. Now, if you're going to main guard passing as a style, you have to be aware on how to escape leg locks. I'm not saying you have to like really dive into leg locks because I'm not that great at it myself, but I have a few early defenses that, that allow me to strip the entanglements and get back into my system. So my first priority is maintaining my foot to floor connection and also trying to keep this middle leg pointed upward. With the knee pointed up, it's going to be a little bit harder for him to finish. From here, I'm gonna work on peeling the outside leg off of my hip. And as I try to back step here, he does a really good job at catching my leg. So right now I'm just gonna grab his head. And as he tries to push the collar tie off my head, I use that opportunity to extract my leg and get back into passing. So this was a perfect slashing sequence. As I get back to neutral, my hand goes to the ankle and my elbow goes on the hip. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to get my chest under the knee. That way I can press with my legs to flare his hips away from me. So notice how I dive in, I'm on Korea's left side, and as we talked about earlier, I don't want to commit to a full north-south, unless we've achieved a position like this first. So the thing with slashing, and one thing that I've really, really adapted into my game, is using my chest on this top leg. So what it's doing right now is it's forcing Korea's hips to the other side, but it's also creating a dilemma where if he moves this top leg, then I get chest to chest and I get the pass. So I'm going to keep my weight planted on that top leg as I extract my arm and it's going to go from that flared elbow on the hip to a scoop grip here on the leg. So now from here I can easily start peeling those knees up and working my way into chest to chest but notice even as I land in chest to chest I'm still sprawled out here on the right hip on Korea's left side and, that, and that's going to give me more stability in settling the pass than if I was squared. Now I do want to quickly talk about guard as I have a guard progression series video coming. So if you guys like any of these videos, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned because I'll be releasing an open guard variant soon. But to give you guys a little sneak peek of what's to come in that, the main things I want to focus on here are one, getting upper body connection, two, maintaining both feet on the inside, three, scooting my hips so they're directly under my opponent, and then four, separating the feet and floor. Now I did kind of opt to fall back on a toe hold, however I feel like following those four missions have given me the most success in open guard. But honestly guys, that is pretty much going to wrap everything up. If you look at the scoreboard, I did win by a pretty big amount here. I think it was like 27-0. If you guys want to watch the raw footage, go look at the second channel. If you guys want to learn more about passing, check out the description where you can find my mini passing instructional that helped me literally change my guard passing life. So thank you guys for watching. Go pass some guards.